So if you've ever used Ulcer, you've probably come across a program by the name of Ulcer Mixer, which is basically an N-Cursor's app to control your Ulcer devices. And today we're going to look at the Pulse Audio equivalent of that by the name of PA Mix or Pamix. I'm not sure what the correct pronunciation for it actually is. So if you're new to the channel, you know what to do and let's jump right into it. So first up, we're going to take a bit of a look at the GitHub page. So let's just have a look at this. So if we come down a bit, this basically shows us what the program actually looks like. Now I'll show you what it looks like on my system because obviously my devices will be a little bit different but the general idea of it is pretty much the same. So if you want to install it, if you're on Arch, then it is available in the AUR. There are also Gen2 instructions and OpenSUSE instructions. On anything else, if there's not a package for it, I guess just go through the manual building. But if you are on Arch, then we can install it from pamix-git. So if we go yay-s pamix-git, Obviously, I'm not going to install this right now because since it's a dash git version, I'm going to have to compile it and that'll take a quite a while. So we're just going to ignore that for now. But if you want to get it installed, that's how you'd go about doing that. So if we run Pamix, we can see what the program actually looks like. Now I'll put it on a full desktop for itself. Okay, so there's a couple of different tabs. So the first one is playback. So you're not going to be able to see anything for this one just yet. But let's bring up something. So if we go into here and just bring up an MPV file. Okay, so if we go over to the second desktop, as we can see under playback, we now have the settings for that specific program. So if you didn't know, in Pulse Audio, you actually have separate audio levels for each of your programs, which is really, really cool. It can be a problem from time to time because you might have your volume turned down for one program or you might have it set to a different device when it should be to something else. So it can be a problem from time to time, but it is a really nice feature to have there, especially when you do need it. One of those times I do need it is when I'm actually recording. Not for when I'm recording stuff like this, but for when I'm doing the podcast. So if I wanted to say play a video on the podcast, I'll need a separate audio channel for my video program and also whatever I'm using to record. Now I can do this through OBS, but it's much easier to have the level set in OBS and then play around with them in Pamix, just so they don't get mixed around in OBS because if they're mixed around in OBS, then they're gonna be wrong for the next person I record with. Typically for me, it's a bit easier just to do them through Pulse. So let's get back to what I was showing before. So in here, we've got the playback section. So there's a couple of things you can see. So we've got this bar in here, and if I was to start playing the audio, it would start moving around. I can show you another tab where it is moving around. So this is the recording tab, but we'll get back to this in just a moment. So if you use the Vim keys or the arrow keys, so L and H or left and right, you can actually change the audio level. So you can go above 100% in Ulster if you didn't realize that. And you can obviously go below 100%. So this. Typically, programs will start at 100% unless you have some specific setting to say they don't. And generally, I leave this unless I'm recording. So typically, most of my programs are going to be at 100%. Now, the other thing you might want to do, especially if you have multiple devices, is actually switch which device you're outputting to or you're inputting from. So if you press S, that'll actually switch the device. So now it's going to output through the output on my Blue Yeti. And there's a I think that's all I have right now. So yeah, that's all that's there. So if you press capital S, it'll go in the other direction. Because there's two devices, you can't really tell a difference. Now, one thing you might want to do is actually unlock the channel. So if you press C, this will actually give you the ability to change the front left and the front right channels. I think if you have a system that has more than those, it'll probably show them, but I haven't actually used anything that's more than stereo. So don't quote me on that. So the reason you'd want to do this is say, I don't know, you have a hearing problem in one ear. Maybe you want to make one ear louder than the other. So that's why you go about doing that. Or maybe one of your speakers just doesn't work properly and you have to raise that speaker up. For whatever reason you'd want to do that, you can unlock the channel. So as I said, you press C to do that. If you press C again, then it relocks the channels. I believe when you relock it, it just takes like an average. I'm not sure. Let's, let's do that. Yeah, it takes an average between the two channels. So I guess that's a neat little feature to have. So I showed you you can switch between different tabs. So the way you go about doing this is through your F key. So F1 is playback, so that obviously isn't going to do anything now. F2 will take you to recording. F3 will take you to output devices. F4 will take you to input devices. And then F5 will take you to cards. Typically, the card section you're not going to touch. But if for whatever reason you do need to touch it, then that's still available there. The one problem I did notice with this, especially when you're new to it, is there isn't a way to actually see the key bindings within the application. So there's not like press question mark or something that'll bring them up. I think there might be a man page for it, so we can check that. Man Pamix, there is a key binding. I actually haven't checked this before. Yeah, the key bindings are in the man page, but it would be nice to actually have them within the program like a lot of other programs do. 
So let's have a look at those other sections. So I showed you the playback section. Let's have a look at the recording section. So I'm obviously not going to touch these settings right now because things will break. So the first section here is for my OBS and the second one is for... I think the first OBS in there is for my desktop audio. So the second one in there obviously is the microphone because you can see that's moving every time I talk. Now you can do the same things you could do before. So you could say like unlock the channels, relock the channels. Was there any other options you could do in here? I think that's... That's pretty much everything, yeah. So you can unlock and lock the channels. I didn't show you this before, but you can actually mute a channel as well. So if we go back to playback, if you press M, then that'll actually mute that channel. So if I start playing this audio now, I'm not gonna get copyright struck. There we go. So now you have no audio coming out through that, which is lovely, because I don't want a copyright strike. Anyway, let's go back to the second tab. So you can do all of the same stuff you could do before. So if we go under the next tab, so we've got the output devices, this is the exact same. So if we were to press C here, that'll split up the channels. If we press M, that'll let us mute that. If we press S, that'll let us cycle between the different things we can control. So we could change the settings for the speakers or through the headphones. I'm not sure what the headphones are in this case. I don't know if that's gonna treat my Blue Yeti as the headphones or, but the Blue Yeti's got a separate thing there. I'm not actually sure what that headphones is. You'd have to test that out, obviously. I think it might, it could also be like the, the audio jack on my laptop. I haven't tested it and I can't really test it right now. Just know that you can switch what device you want your built-in audio to actually output through. Same with the Blue Yeti as well. So if we go under the next tab, which is input devices, all the same stuff still applies. So unlock, lock, mute, unmute, switch device. I don't, it doesn't make sense to switch device on this. So I don't believe you can. Yes, you actually can, okay. So for some of the stuff, there is stuff you can switch around. So for the built-in analog audio, you can use the internal microphone or you could use the headset, which the headset, I believe, is the actual audio port. So obviously I have nothing plugged into that right now because I'm using the Blue Yeti, which is a USB microphone. So yeah, you can do all of that stuff. A lot of the stuff you're not going to touch most of the time, but it is nice to have quick access to it when you do want to change it. And then under cards, I don't believe you can actually do much to these because if you try to unlock and lock it, there's not channels there to change. So you can't really do that. If you press mute, that doesn't really do anything. I don't know what just happened there. I just pressed L and it crashed the program. Okay, don't press L when you are on the recording tab apparently because it might crash the program. Let's. It didn't crash it the second time. Okay, I don't know why it just crashed there. Maybe that's just a weird thing with my shell. I, I don't know. So there's one last key I forgot to mention. So if I start pressing the number keys, as we'll see, the percentage actually changes. So if I press, say, 9, it takes us to 90%. If I press 4, it takes us to 40%. So you should roughly get what that actually does. 0, it takes us to 100%. So the number keys go up in increments of 10%. So if you want to quickly change your volume levels without using the H and L keys or the arrow keys, you can go ahead and just press a number like that. So that's really cool. Now, you might be wondering why would you want to use a program like this when you could use, say, Pavu Control, or you could also use just PACTL and control stuff directly from the terminal. Now, there's two reasons. I have a reason for both of them, basically. So Pavu Control, I don't know why, but apparently it's not just a me problem. I thought it was a me problem. On certain window managers, it takes like a minute to two minutes to launch. And I have no idea why. I've had some BSPWM users also say this, some i3 users, some DWM users. I don't know why it will take so long on certain setups, but for some reason, Pavu Control is pretty much unusable. So that's why I don't use Pavu Control. Plus if I can find a really good terminal alternative, I'm gonna usually rely on the terminal app instead. So why wouldn't you wanna use PACTL? And I don't think that you shouldn't use it. I actually do use PACTL for my just general, just audio level control. So if I start pressing super and up, that raises my audio level. You might not be able to see it too well, but in my polybyte is changing just a little bit. The reason I have both of these set up is because I don't wanna have bindings for every single thing that I can do in Pulse Audio. Some of the stuff I do so rarely that I don't really feel any need to actually bind it. I'd much rather just have it set up in some sort of easy to use program and then everything else like my general audio controls, maybe even switching audio devices, just have that bound in some other way so that for those actions, I can get to them insanely quickly. And then for anything else, it doesn't really matter if it takes a little bit longer to get to because I still have a very easy way to get to it instead of using a like a GUI control for it, for example. 
So I reckon that's pretty much everything for this video. There's Actually, no, one last thing I did want to mention. You can actually rebind these keys. So if you go look at the configuration section on the GitHub, there is a bit of stuff about configuration. I already have this open in a separate tab. Um, most of it, I think actually all of it is just about key binding. So I'm not going to go into that in this video. There's not like any color customization or anything like that. It's just for customizing the key binds. So if for whatever reason you don't like the default key binds, personally, I think they're really good. But if you want to change any of them, then go ahead and look at this. And it seems pretty easy to do it. So yeah, have a look at that, I guess. So yeah, now I reckon that's pretty much everything for me. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below, let me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like this, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm now aiming for 10,000 subs and any help be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video's in, so go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I've got my social links, so if you want to chat with me or get video updates, go check out my Discord, my Telegram, and all of that other stuff down below. And down below, I also have my support link. So if you'd like to support the channel, then I've got my Patreon and a bunch of other donate links down there. So feel free to use any of those. But obviously, if you don't want to support the channel, then you obviously do not have to. But any help will be really appreciated. And lastly, I've got my alternate video platforms. So at this stage, it is BitTube and Library. I'm working on BitChute, but it's not going super well right now. But I'll let you guys know when I actually have the videos up there. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. And I'm out.